Hello to all of you dear ones. Welcome to the Fixed Focus Program. I am Ibrahim Hashemi and this is another Fixed Focus Program. Today we want to have a calculation about the accuracy of the movement of the solar dish in the Fixed Focus System. This accuracy in the movement of the dish depends on our solar tracker. If you have seen the videos related to the construction of the solar tracker, you must be familiar with the Pyramid and Step Solar Tracker. And if you haven't seen this video, refer to the above address. In the first picture, you can see the components of a Step Solar Tracker. And this is an image of the triangular plates including the photocell in the Pyramidal Solar Tracker. If you remember and have seen the video, the pyramidal tracker consists of four triangular plates that cover the lens plate on them. Sunlight that passes through the lens can hit any of the triangular plates of the photocell. In this case, with the activation of the motors, the solar radiation is directed to a single photocell at the end of the pyramid. If the focus of the lens hits the photocell at the end of the pyramid, the tracker will be disabled, which means that the tracking has been done correctly. In this figure, you can see the components of a pyramid tracker. Now, according to the working method of the pyramid solar tracker, we want to make a calculation. In fact, we want to see how accurate the work of the solar tracker is with the change of the sun's motion. In this calculation, the function of step and pyramid solar tracker is almost the same. But the calculation of this solar tracker is more understandable. Well let's go to do a calculation. Suppose this is the cross-sectional shape of a pyramidal solar tracker that I have drawn large. And here is the location of the lens, which I have not considered because the refractive index is the same in all cases. And this green line is a perpendicular ray of light from the sun. At the bottom of the pyramid, we have a single photocell. That we have used small photocells whose diameter is 3 millimeters. And the green ray is perpendicular to it, and when the sunlight movement is done, the red ray hits the photocell. In the figure you see, these two rays together form an angle. In the first case, the rays are perpendicular to the solar tracker, and the next ray occurs after the sun moves. In fact, the solar tracker is activated when the sun's rays hit each of the triangular plates of the photocell. That is, the end of the single photocell page. So, if I name this point A, this point B, this point C, and the middle of the single photocell O, the focal length of the lens used is 70 millimeters. That is, the height of the solar tracker pyramid is 70 millimeters. 70 millimeters. Well, first we have to calculate the angle between two solar rays, I will call this angle alpha. If you look carefully, we have a right angle triangle with vertices A, O and C. O, A, and C right triangles. In this triangle, we have tangent alpha equal to OC to AO. Here, OC is the half diameter of the photocell. That is 1.5 millimeters. So the tangent of alpha is equal to 1.5 to the focal length of the lens. So we have a tangent of 1.5 to 70. Here the alpha value is equal to the alpha arc tangent. That is, the value of the angle between the two rays of radiation equals 1.36 degrees. 
Therefore, the alpha angle is 1.36 degrees. Well, we know that it takes 24 hours for the Earth to rotate around itself, so the Sun has scanned the Earth once at a constant speed during this 24 hours. So, the time period when the Sun can see 360 degrees of the Earth is 24 hours. And if we multiply 24 hours by 60 minutes, we get the time in minutes. A numerical value of 1440 minutes is obtained. Therefore, in order to see the Sun the next day at almost the same point, we need 1440 minutes to pass. Actually, 1440 minutes is equivalent to 360 degrees. Now, with a simple equation, we can get the amount of time it takes for the Sun to travel an arc distance of 1.36 degrees. And the value of X in this relationship is the amount of time required for this distance. This value is equal to 5.45 minutes, that is, the time interval between turning off and turning on the horizontal engine is 5.45 minutes. In this image, the calculation is clearly visible. Of course, this calculation is only related to the horizontal movement of the solar dish. And for vertical movement, another special calculation can be done, and the amount of time is certainly more. In the pyramidal solar tracker, it is enough that the focal point of the lens hits the single photocell from the edges of the triangular plates. A question is raised here. And if the sun's rays hit the edge of the photocell after the movement of the solar dish, will the solar tracker become inactive? In fact, the focal point of the lens is placed in the center of the photocell. Because our circuit includes electric capacitors, depending on their capacity, DC motors do not stop at once. Of course, the use of capacitors in these circuits is used to prevent the frequency of disconnection and connection. Now with a simple calculation we were able to get the accuracy of the tracker. Well, let's go and see in practice how accurate our tracker is and how accurately it can move the solar dish. Well, now we want to observe the accuracy of the horizontal rotation of the solar dish in the fixed focus system. In order to get the best results, we should use the largest axis and the farthest point from the center of rotation. The best place for this is the system wheel rollers. As you can see in this figure, the longer the arc length, the more visible the rotation error. Therefore, the greater the distance from the center, the greater the speed. And the shorter the distance, the lower the speed. Now we will check the accuracy of the rotation of this roller. It is possible that the horizontal motor of the dish is now in the start mode, so I have to move the moving part of the system to delay this happening. Now I am moving it. Well, we will let it stop and return to its original place. For better visibility, I prepared a yellow adhesive tape. And I stick it on the roller wheel and the fixed part. Now the grooved roller is stopped. And I stick the glue between the fixed and moving parts. I cut the glue to a suitable size and separate the glue between the grooved roller and the fixed part. Now I bring the camera closer so that it can be seen easily. Now the yellow glue can be seen completely. Now I move the grooved roller without slipping to see where it stops when it returns. The roller is going back. The circuit capacitor causes the stop to be delayed. And see where it was placed. And this actually shows us the accuracy of the tracker. 
Well, you saw the accuracy of the tracker in the horizontal movement of the fixed focus system. Of course, the same accuracy is maintained in the vertical movement mode, with the difference that the vertical movement is much slower than the horizontal movement, because solar trackers are similar for both vertical and horizontal paths. I hope that you are satisfied with the program. Stay healthy until the next show.